Hello everyone, today we will take a look at the ZD915, a cheap desoldering station. I bought mine back in early March and I've been meaning to make a review of this unit since then. Mine is a classy, class branded unit, probably just a local rebatch, but there are many brands of this available everywhere with different names on the box but coming from the same factory. There might be small changes in the packaging or stickers etc, but yours should be more or less the same product. In the box we find the manual on the top and below the soft cell foam there is a smaller box and in that box there is a small bag with 2 desoldering tips and some cotton filters. In another bag we get 3 nozzle cleaning needles for the 3 different sizes of nozzles included, the 2 I showed and the 1 pre-installed on the desoldering gun. Other than the tip, the desoldering gun also comes with a pre-installed filter too and a green tip cover. I'm not sure if this is a protective tip or if there are laws that require green tips on products like these in some parts of the world, that's also possible. I will talk about the desoldering gun more in a bit, but before that let's finish the unboxing. In the big box we also find a stand, a plastic adapter for the vacuum hose and the power cord with the main unit itself. The unit is actually bigger than I initially expected, but it is not too big and it is not too heavy. In the front there is a display and below that there are three buttons for increasing and decreasing the temperature and switching between Celsius and Freedom units. Below these there is a nice feeling power switch, the usual soldering iron connector and the vacuum hose port where you screw in the plastic adapter onto and then the connect the vacuum hose to. On the other side there is a metal plate where you can insert the stand to, but I have more to say on that in a bit. On the back there is a fan grill for the fan and the power socket. So let's tear this down before turning it on. There are in total 8 screws that need to be removed to remove the top cover. A bit excessive maybe but I don't really mind that. All the screws have shake proof washers, especially important because the vacuum will vibrate obviously and yeah, with that screws can come loose so this is a nice touch. The construction is as cheap as you might expect, but they did not cheap out on important things like the shake proof washers, crimp connectors for the AC input and proper grounding of the metal parts. On the left side there is the power supply which is enclosed, I didn't tear that down further. Behind that there is a black box to reduce the voltage feeding the fan and no it's not a buck converter it's just a big resistor. I guess it works but that's definitely not how, how I would design it, I'd definitely use a buck converter there. but. Yeah, I guess that works as I said. On the right side there is the vacuum pump mounted on rubber stands and on the front there are a few control PCBs and all of the connectors on them are gunked in place. Again, nice touch. So overall the internals of this thing are uh, decent enough, especially for the price. There are some weird choices like the resistor box for the fan and the usual cost saving measure of not including any bracing of the top of the front panel, which is plastic. But I think this is still good enough for the price, I mean, what do you expect, this is a fairly cheap unit. At least the wires are properly crimped and heat shrinked, connectors are gunked in place, the chassis is grounded, and the screws used on this thing have shake proof washers. But the desoldering gun stand is not great unfortunately. Clearly, this is a soldering iron stand based on its shape and its size and it can't hold the desoldering gun well. And it is also too short to be used standalone, you have to attach it to the side of the unit. So the rubber feet on it is useless and again that's a sign that this is designed for a, just a soldering iron and not for this job. But it works well enough if you don't have high requirements for this but in my case, in my setup, I can't have it on the right side of the unit which means I can't use the stand so I'm sharing the stand with my soldering iron which isn't great so uh, I'd recommend getting a separate stand if you plan on using this unit for a long time or if you can't mount the uh, mount, uh, stand on the right side of the unit, just get a separate stand, they are cheap enough. But the stand included is good enough for uh, most people if you don't want to you know, buy a separate stand. The desoldering gun itself feels pretty cheaply constructed but the trigger feels good enough. It is difficult to open the container with the sucked solder and not sure if that's a tolerance issue on my unit or all of them are like this but, but it is difficult. I worry every time that I will crack the tube there but it lasted so far after many months. Also after some use often some solder will be stuck in the tube so you have to use the needles to clean. This can be difficult to do especially if you clean less frequently like I do as more solder will accumulate and it will be more difficult to push it with the needle. I broke a cleaning needle when filming this and you can see that on camera actually it was when I was recording for this video but fortunately you can find replacement needles if you need them I and mean, they are fairly standard sizes and 
yeah they work so at least there's that so let's move on to the unit itself and it's working when turned on there is a few seconds of delay when the unit is booting and then it starts heating and the heating itself actually takes a long time the heater is 80 watts which is fairly high but the mass that it needs heating is much larger than a normal soldering iron and that's why it takes a while at least it remembers the temperature you last set so uh, you don't have to redo that every time which is nice the fan noise is annoying it's not the loudest fan i've ever heard in a product like this but it is close so it might be worth replacing the fan in the back but because this unit doesn't use buck converters for the fans and instead just uses a resistor you should just replace that with a buck converter as well otherwise uh, you might end up burning the fan the vacuum pump on this also makes some noise as you might expect but for a vacuum pump it's not that bad for a demonstration i will be desoldering some components from pcbs i'm no longer using it is easy enough to use just make sure you have the right size tip place it so the legs of the components you are desoldering goes through the needle wait a bit until the solder melts completely and then pull the trigger but obviously don't wait too long to avoid damaging anything on the pcb this works surprisingly well so far i didn't encounter any problems desoldering normal size components Larger components are a bit trickier to desolder, but you can still do it with this desoldering station. I'm not saying this thing can desolder everything, I'm sure there are some massive thermal mass components out there, but for almost everything, this should work and it will work well. It's now time for the conclusion, and as usual, I will start with the negatives. As I said, the build quality is meh, the stand is shit, and the unit is loud in operation, but it works, and it works well, and for the price, I can't really complain about that. If you are looking for a cheap desoldering station, this is probably your best option. There are a few links in the description if you're interested in this product, but that's it for this review, so I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave me a like down below, and thanks for watching.